Walker Evans, a pioneering figure in 20th century photography, captured the essence of American life with profound insight and honesty. Renowned for his documentary style, Evans possessed a unique ability to reveal the beauty and complexity of everyday existence. Through his lens, mundane subjects acquired a timeless significance, offering viewers a glimpse into the soul of a nation in flux. From the Great Depression to the urban landscapes of New York City, Evans' images resonate with a raw authenticity, inviting contemplation and reflection. His work transcends mere documentation, embodying a poetic narrative that continues to inspire generations of photographers and storytellers alike. As we embark on this visual journey through the life and work of Walker Evans, we invite you to immerse yourself in the captivating world he so masterfully captured. Prepare to witness the unfolding narrative of an artist who dared to challenge conventions and redefine the boundaries of photography. Join us as we unravel the layers of his legacy, uncovering the hidden truths and enduring beauty that continue to resonate with us today.
Walker Evans was born on November 3, 1903 in St. Louis, Missouri, United States. Evans began making photographs as a child and continued as the family moved to Chicago and subsequently Ohio. After a brief stint at Williams College, Evans moved to New York, where he planned to become a poet and novelist. Thomas Stearns Eliot, David Herbert Richards Lawrence, James Joyce, and Edward Eslin Cummings were among his personal heroes. Once in New York, however, he experienced crippling writer's block. He wanted so much to write that he couldn't write a word. Unable to produce and needing a job, Evans accepted low pay for work at the New York Public Library and several bookstores, where he was free to roam and read. After three years of dead-end jobs and no luck in the publishing world, the young man packed up his belongings and set sail for Paris, still planning to realize his literary ambitions. Writing came no more easily to Evans in Paris, but the time was one of great intellectual stimulus, according to the artist. Having encountered the work of French photographer Eugene Adjet and his pupil Berenice Abbott, he was primed to retrace their footsteps through the city of Paris. In 1927, he returned to New York and joined the ranks of an emerging literary circle that was increasingly intertwined with art. It counted amongst its numbers John Cheever, Hart Crane, and Lincoln Kirstein. Stimulated by this community, Evans's budding interest in photography soon became a full-fledged passion. By 1929, he was making ambitious photographs of the city's skyscrapers and machinery and returned to his interest in Adjet's work, whose sparse photographs of end-of-the-century Paris greatly resonated with his growing disdain for aesthetic imagery. Inspired, Evans began to delve even deeper into photography and was soon publishing his work and receiving commissions for photo series. In 1933, on one such commission, the artist was sent to Cuba on assignment for Carlton Beals's book, The Crime of Cuba, in 1933. While on this assignment, Evans befriended and drank nightly with Ernest Hemingway, who helped the artist extend his stay in Havana an additional week. The photographs Evans captured of Cuban coastal street life beggars and policemen represent the beginning of his shift away from the formalism of European modernism and towards his own distinctive brand of realism. Photography flourished under the Great Depression thanks to Roosevelt's New Deal which paid artists to work. The Farm Security Administration hired Evans alongside other photographers to document the government's improvement efforts in rural communities. Unconcerned with the political ideology behind his assignment, Evans spent the better part of 1935 and 1936 eloquently capturing the aesthetic texture of ordinary life via rural churches, bedrooms, faded signs, and rumpled work clothes. He avoided using upscale equipment. Despite being familiar with and capable of affording the latest technology, Evans used an outdated camera with a very slow lens, just as his idol Eugene Adjet had done in Paris. In 1936, he collaborated with the writer James Agee on an essay with photographs and text documenting tenant farmers for Fortune magazine. Fortune never published the material that ensued from this commission, but in 1941 Evans and Agee's collaboration was assembled into a book entitled Let Us Now Praise Famous Men, a series of photographs that unflinchingly captures the stark tragedy of the Great Depression. The Museum of Modern Art recognized Evans's gift for capturing the American vernacular with his first solo exhibition in 1938. 
Around the same time, Evans began to shoot a series of portraits taken surreptitiously in the New York City subway. Like his earlier work, these photographs revealed unassuming moments in daily life with straightforward exactness. In 1945, Evans joined the staff of Time magazine and shortly thereafter became an editor at Fortune, where he continued to work for two decades. Despite tremendous patience with the camera and compassion for working-class heroes, Evans was evidently short-tempered in the upscale circles in which he and his wife traveled and prone to unprompted fits of rage. In 1965, Evans became a professor at the Yale University School of Art. In 1973, Evans began to work with the innovative Polaroid SX-70 camera and an unlimited supply of film from its manufacturer. The virtues of the camera fit perfectly with his search for a concise yet poetic vision of the world. Its instant prints were for the infirm 70-year-old photographer what scissors and cut paper were for the aging Matisse. The unique SX-70 prints are the artist's last photographs, the culmination of half a century of work in photography. With the new camera, Evans returned to several of his enduring themes, among the most important of which are signs, posters, and their ultimate reduction, the letter forms themselves. Evans died at his apartment in New Haven, Connecticut in 1975,
The profound impact of Evans on the field of photography is undeniable. His legacy extends far beyond the confines of his camera lens, influencing generations of photographers and shaping the very essence of documentary photography. While he shunned extravagant equipment and flashy style, Evans pioneered the practice of presenting his work in exquisitely crafted books, elevating his photographs to the realm of fine art. This innovative approach not only showcased his keen eye for capturing the essence of everyday life, but also paved the way for future photojournalists to imbue their images with a sense of honesty in presenting their art. Furthermore, Evans's role as a dedicated educator further solidified his lasting influence in the photographic community. His teachings and guidance inspired a cadre of talented artists, including luminaries such as Helen Levitt, Robert Frank, Diane Arbus, Lee Friedlander, and Bernd and Hilla Becher. As a result, Evans's impact has been perpetuated in every snapshot that captures the essence of modern life, transcending the barriers of time and space. His ability to reveal beauty in the ordinary and everyday continues to serve as a fount of inspiration for contemporary photographers seeking to capture authenticity and truth in their images. Through his commitment to visual honesty and focus on photographic narrative, Evans has left an indelible mark on the art of photography, ensuring his place as an iconic and revered figure in the medium's history.